Welcome back. Uh, time to look at what the papers have for us this morning. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Before we delve into the papers and look at what we have on the front pages, let's uh, quickly say good morning and a happy new year to Ambrose Igboke, who is a guest analyst this morning. He joins us live from the beautiful city of Enugu. Uh, Mr. Igboke, good morning. Happy new year to you. Good morning. Happy New Year, and we are enjoying the Amata weather in Enugu. Oh, fantastic. Enugu is a city close to my heart, you know, um, oh. very cool weather, very hospitable people. W what's the fuel supply situation in Enugu this, uh, this, this period? Well, fuel supply is not the problem. The problem is the cost of fuel. Mm. There is there is fuel, uh, but the cost is uh, outrageous. I mean, as I yesterday, I bought a liter of fuel for three feet. Wow. Wow, that's uh, that's so that's really it's, sad. It's, it's crazy. So there is fuel in the cost of fuel. All right, all right. Anyway, um, let, let's let's look at what the papers say. I'm sure we have one or two things about fuel. Uh, that's the situation we all find ourselves in the country these days. We'll start with the nation. Uh, very interesting headlines, but no surprises that the paper is uh, leading with a political headline. Um, the first one, then the big one. What Nigerians stand to gain from Tinubu Shetima? What Nigerians stand to gain from Tinubu Shetima is not too far from what the paper had in its, uh, on its front page yesterday. Yesterday, what they had was why Nigerians should vote Tinubu Shetima by Buhari. And today, the nation is saying uh, what Nigerians stand to gain from Tinubu Shetima. I don't know if it's a, it's a campaign piece or, <laughs> or something like that, but no surprises there. I'll leave it at that. More from the nation. Judiciary won't be manipulated under me, says CJN Ariwola. Judiciary won't be manipulated under me, says CJN Ariwola. Uh, DSS won't succumb to intimidation, harassment. Sawolu, uh, Uzodema, others mourn Ayamu Sigwe. Huge crowd welcomes Peter B to Onicha. We have more from the nation. Elections will hold as planned. Federal government dismisses security threat to polls. I think yesterday an INEC official said something uh, about that. One Edo train attack victim regains freedom. Uh, parties okay beavers for polls. Uh, some of the headlines on front page of the nation. Let's quickly go to the next paper, the leadership, with some interesting headlines. The big one there, the kicker, 45 days to go on the headline. FG dismisses threats to 2023 election says there's no cause for alarm elections will hold as planned afeni ferre uh, warns against the postponement cancellation agf asks governors to join fight against insecurity more from the leadership nobody can blackmail me over illicit wealth pmb interesting one presidency i'm not in race for ndigbo's turn obi uh, uk keen on helping nigeria recover article who is in the united kingdom um for reasons that are well documented let's leave it at that why we asked banks to load atms with new notes cbn tears as nscdc prays for 11 officers killed by bandits accident obasanjo atiku squandered ptdf money says tinubu okay it's the same tinubu he went to see and to plead for support from uh, that's politics, you might say. The Punch has the following headlines. Last lap, Tinubu campaign malls alliance with smaller parties. The riders to that, to APC, looking beyond PDP, NNPP, LP, reaching out to parties to adopt Tinubu PCC member, Senator Akambi. No negotiation yet. We won't step down for ex Lagos governor, accord party presidential candidates <laughs> more from the nation the punch uh, gunmen attack ndla operatives soldiers rescue lagos baron we have more nscdc mourns as kaduna bandits kill seven officers will be promises to negotiate with biafran agitators entertainers politicians eulogize i am Osigwe as ama founder dies really sad one Blackout of 16 die in California flooding. FG shortlists 139 bidders for gas project. Two female suspects detained over Lagos missing baby and Nigerian passport falls by 38 places in global ranking. Those are the 
headlines on front page of the punch. We'll quickly take the last one, which happens to be The Guardian. They're going with a, their big story looking at the Nigerian currency, the Naira, with this headline, Nigerian or Naira redesign policy comes under pressure. Naira redesign policy uh, comes under pressure. Um, some of the writers to that headline, 27% of Lagosians yet to cite new banknotes is what the paper is saying. 27% of Lagosians yet to cite new banknotes. I haven't seen one of those. Do someone help me fetch one yesterday. Customers seek six-month extension of January 31 deadline. CBN under pressure to extend old note demonetization. Uh, FASWA, subject impl subject implementation rather, to evaluation adjustment. Subject implementation to evaluation adjustment. Uh, some of the writers to that. More from The Guardian. 2023 elections as insecurity stokes fear. FG allays concern over cancellation. Resident doctors write government on impending nationwide strike. Uh, Afe Babalola tasks rich Nigerians philanthropists on education sector revival um, are some of the headlines on the front page. Um, World Bank warns of fresh global recession, higher poverty in SSA. Let's quickly um, move over to the analysis. And of course, uh, Ambrose Ibukwe is standing by. Ambrose, let's start with the last paper, The Guardian. And uh, I don't know if you've been able to cite or see or withdraw even uh, the new Naira notes. What are your thoughts on what we're hearing the stakeholders and customers say? I mean, uh, The Guardian reports that customers are seeking an extension. Do you think the CBN should extend its deadline for the demonetization of the old notes? And have you been able to lay your hand on any of the new notes? Well, as of Friday, when I was on this station, uh, when I was asked about the scarcity of the Naira, I said that I was not finished. Uh, but yesterday, for the first time, I saw it and I touched and I, uh, I owned it for the first time, not from the bank, but from a transaction. Okay, so hmm. there are so many controversies around the new Naira notes. One of them is about alleged uh, thick. Uh, counterfeit uh, copies being, uh, uh, you know, available in the market already, and that is worrisome. A lot of people have demonstrated uh, uh, the difference between the fake and the original. There's a video circulating around the internet right now, where a woman was told us that um, she went to Lagos Island to make some deposits, and the people at the POS where made the deposit. Uh, selected the money out and said it was fake. I'm talking about the new Naira note. I should demonstrate that that golden, um, uh, like a hydrographic golden stuff on the uh, on the note, the golden stuff, that when you peel it, it peels up. I should demonstrate that it was peeling off. And that, that one she said, they said is the fake one. And that the, gold, the, the original one, the, the genuine Naira note does not peel. So if you're already having those issues, Last time, we also said that some people demonstrated that the ink from the notes, when it comes in contact with uh, uh, liquid particles, uh, peels, off, uh, you know, peels off. And the CBN came out to explain that, uh, the Nigerian Prison and Making Company came to explain that, oh, it was normal, that because it was new, that the ink that was used in making it, for me, that explanation does not suffice. We have been using IRA notes for eight, the decades. And we have never heard of this kind of explanation. Uh, so uh, yeah, we have been using Naira notes for a very long time. And then this kind of explanation doesn't occur. So I think uh, these feedbacks should be taken seriously by the financial regulation agencies, especially the Nigerian Prisons uh, Security Meeting Company, and then the CBN, so that we can, they can go back to the drawing board if there are errors or mistakes, and they can correct it instead of being defensive all the time. Mm. All right. Um, the CBN had asked banks uh, to, to stop giving the new Naira notes over the counter and then to only give them or load them in the ATM machines. And uh, yesterday we actually had this conversation. I was asking uh, the guest uh, analyst, you know, what he thought about it, because I felt that if you're saying that the bank should not give the new notes over the counter, but you've set January 31 as a deadline uh, for you know, the use of the old Naira, people want to go and maybe change the, the Naira notes and they need it 
I, if I take one million to the bank, you say, please, I have this one million cash at home. Uh, give me new notes because I need it. I'm not going to get that one million naira back. <laughs> you know, I won't get it back. So, 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 if, if yeah, if I want to get maybe as a as an individual, maybe uh, the five hundred thousand naira or whatever it is, I can't get it back, and I don't want to go to the ATM. What do I do? Well, you should ask uh, Mr. Mefele that question because uh, perhaps he's going down as the worst civilian governor Nigeria may ever have. I don't know because uh, the kind of counter policies, the kind of confusion emanating from CBN is uh, something that uh, defies logic. At the same breath, you are doing so many things at the same time that are very contradictory. You are asking people to return the old Naira notes to the banks. You are saying that banks should not give us the new Naira notes. You are setting a deadline that is almost impossible for the exchange of the new Naira notes to the old Naira notes. Yet, you tell the banks not to uh, give Naira notes across the counter. <clears throat> the first and primary place to collect money in a former sector is the bank, is through the counter of the bank. That is the first. Now, what they have done is to put a limit and said, across the counter transaction, the limit is this and that. Now, at the same time, you are saying you are changing Naira notes, people should bring back old. At the same breath, you are putting a, a tab on the, on the limit you can withdraw. That is counterproductive already. You are putting an impossible deadline. So I, I, I feel that <clears throat> people should call him to order. The new Naira notes, we can use six months to, ex to, to exchange. I have mentioned this before, that even the United Kingdom that is changing their currency because of the new king they have, the picture of the new king is replacing that of the queen, they have given two years, to 2024, so that the old one and the new one can go together. And then, this issue of cashless economy, no cashless economy, I keep saying that no economy is cashless. Every economy in the world still uses cash. But what, we are, what, is, what, the, what is done is you make multiple platforms for payment so that it can be easy for people to pay. But here, yeah, even the ones we are using, because of the uh, uh, quality of internet, uh, the banks will tell you our system. Even when you enter the bank, they will tell you our system is down. People want to collect money, they still five hours, they say my system is that you cannot even do transaction. So that they will say up link, down link, all kinds of technical stories. Is that where you want to operate in fully cash? So people should just start to stop mouthing uh, cliches. You know, so the, yeah. don't suffer Nigerians. Hmm. What, 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 this cashless policy, this uh, withdrawal limit, I don't I don't have quarrel with it. They don't tell me that under four weeks, I must exchange my new Nara note with the old Nara note. And at the same time, they are telling the banks uh, not to release. I think Nigerians should, should protest against this kind of thing. Well, Mr. Boke, the, the, the CBN yeah. has, has given some explanation as to why it's uh, uh, directing the banks to give out the new Nara loan notes only through the ATMs. Uh, on the front page of the leadership is a story at the left corner of the front page of the leadership. Uh, why we asked banks to load ATMs with new Naira notes, a new note, CBN. Now, let's just read excerpts. He says the Central Bank of Nigeria has explained that the reason it directed uh, banks to load their automated teller machines uh, with new notes is to ensure that the redesigned Naira notes are made available at all times of the day. It also reminded banks of the implication of not complying with the directive of loading their ATMs with the new notes. Uh, the paper says this is just as, as it maintains that the January 31, 2023 deadline uh, for the removal of the old notes in circulation remains sacrosanct. Uh, this is coming with 20 days left before the January 31 deadline date. The paper says the Apex Bank also explained that the additional features of the new Naira notes are to curb menace of counterfeiting and to ensure a strong and effective legal tender in line with the mandate of the bank on best practice. So they've added some features. 
Um, I don't know if those features have come after the complaints of people or not. But uh, it's so funny, Mr. Boki, because um, you've seen what, from what people have said, they're not going back on that January 31 deadline. But so if, if they're saying you should load only 200 naira. Not going back. I mean, these are military languages. You don't care Nigerians are not going back. Who employed you? Is it not tax for you that didn't pay you? are telling Nigeria you are not going back as if you are a military detector talking to people? What is wrong with this crop of public servants? We own you. We employed you there. And therefore, if you are putting us in stress, we'll tell you that you are, we, don't, we won't tolerate it. Don't tell us you are not going back, especially when you are confused the leadership like the CPA leadership. Who are there to tell us they are not going back? We employ them. They are public servants. So they should stop using that kind of language, especially when they are very competent at managing this kind of transition they are, they are bringing on us. They are highly competent. If a MFL has tried this as when he was MD of, of Venice Bank, I'm sure Jim Obia would have fired him. Is it because it's a public office? All right. Well, a, a, a question that has been on, on my lips since uh, yesterday is if they're saying the banks should only put or load the ATMs with only 200 naira note. So how are we going to have, I have access well, to the 1,000, the, the 500? The best way to exchange this like, new Naira note with the old one for people to have the new Naira note is through the bank, uh, is through counter. Uh, how much they are placed the limit on the ATM withdrawal. So if you want to go to do Master Market to buy something now, or you want to buy something across the corner of the street, you, you start going to, uh, you don't have enough cash to do that. If the CBI governor is tired of the work, he should just resign and leave. Or they should fire him. All right, uh, let's look at uh, what Peter B is saying. Um, the papers have given some, um, some good coverage, you know, to his campaign uh, yesterday. Uh, the nation put it this way, huge crowd welcomes P2B to Onicha. Uh, we have the, the leadership newspaper saying, Presidency, I'm not in the race for Ndigbo's turn. Obi, I'm not in the race for Ndigbo's turn. I think another paper I saw, he said he's not representing Biafra, but Nigeria. Um, another paper, apart from the leadership, the, the Punch newspaper has this headline, Obi promises to negotiate with Biafran agitators. What are your thoughts on his uh, recent campaign rhetoric? I didn't quite get you. Okay. What are your thoughts on the statements he's made so far? The first one, of course, like I said, the, the nation informed us that he was in Onicha, where a huge crowd welcomed him. Uh, in the, on the leadership, he said he's not in the race for Ndigo's turn. That's Peter B., the LP uh, presidential candidate. He said he's not in the race to represent Ndigo. All right. And then... In the punch, he also went on to say that he is promising to negotiate uh, with Biafran agitators. Well, first of all, <clears throat> Obi stands for competence. Obi stands for a paradigm shift for ideas. Obi stands for hope. And that is why a lot of mi uh, millions of Nigerians across religious divide, across political divide, Across religious divides. In fact, Obi even has more followership outside the Igbo land than in Igbo land. So people who are trying to pigeonhole him into Southeast or whatever are being just mischievous. The momentum, in fact, one of the most fanatical base of Obi is in those states. And this is not an Igbo state. So people should stop, uh, people want to create a propaganda of ethnicity around him, have failed. In fact, it's so funny that, uh, let me say it's so funny, it's so intriguing, that people, members of other political parties, are endorsing Obi openly. Some states, they will say our political, our, uh, uh, our party, vote for the governor of our party, but when it comes to national, vote to be. So that kind of momentum was seen last in 1993. We have not seen that kind of momentum. It has always been a one-way uh, you know, show for, uh, for, for ruling parties over the, since 1999, except the disruption that happened in 2015.
And then it was a struggle for even the equipment to maintain 2019. But this time around, you know, there is a vibrancy. And for the first time in a long while, politicians who are contesting for presidency are not just going around the streets eating uh, corn, roasted corn or barley, or drinking sachet or pee of water, or uh, backing babies with wrapper on their back, or hawking granite, all those uh, pedestal, uh, you know, show that they put up when elections come, so in a bit to identify with the common man. Because of OB, the discourse and the election has been raised to a level of intellectualism, where people now talk about issues, how you want to tackle issues. And then because he was doing that, other parties have to wake up. So it's, it's an issue-based election that was enforced by this people, be, and other people are following it. Therefore, he's right. He's not a candidate for the Eagles. He's a candidate for, after all, a lot of people leaders are even rejecting him. But Igbo leaders are not the Igbo, Igbo citizens. They are not the majority of the Igbo citizens. Even the governor is not supporting him. The governor of Igbo state is not supporting him. Governor of the uh, is not. So, what, who, what, so when people say it's an Igbo prayer, I don't understand it. Okay. So is that talk that they will try to pigeonhole him is not correct. And he's very, he is not, he's not a, a candidate for the Igbo prayer. He's a candidate for a better hope for Nigeria. And that is what he has been preaching since. And that is why a lot of you see him like that. And that's why they are, they are rooting for him. Hmm. So it remains to be seen that those things are translated into electoral victory. All right. Talking about uh, uh, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, um, uh, you know, receiving endorsements and support from officials of other parties, um, the punch, it is front page lead headline, uh, is informing us that uh, the, P the APC presidential candidate, uh, Shewa Jibola Ampet Tinubu, is uh, considering, his campaign council is considering going into alliance with uh, other parties uh, outside the four leading uh, parties, the NMPP, LP, and PDP. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Because um, according to a PCC member, Senator Akambi, they're looking at uh, forming alliances, a coalition. You think that is feasible? Even as one of the presidential candidates is saying that uh, he's, this, he's not going to do it. Um, that's number one. That's on the front page of the punch. Now, if we go uh, to the leadership, Obasanjo uh, versus an article versus um, uh, Tinubu is still on. The Tinubu camp is still talking about Obasanjo following his endorsement of the Labour Party presidential candidate. This time, the presidential candidate of the, of the APC, Tinubu, says Obasanjo and uh, Atiku squandered the PTDF money. I don't know what you think about this. Uh, I would like you to talk about the two questions, uh, uh, issues I've raised. Um, and also, especially when Tinubu himself uh, went, should I say cap in hand, or he flew a chopper to Basenjo's uh, home, country home in Ota, to go and ask for his support for his uh, presidential bid. But today he's telling us that uh, Obasanjo and Atiku squandered PTDF money. Well, uh, first of all, I don't know why... APC is contradicting itself when it concerns Obasanjo's and John's endorsement of P2B. One is that APC said that, it, uh, that the endorsement was inconsequential. So why losing sleep? Why is he talking about it uh, more than 10 days after it has happened? So by talking about it, you are still putting relevance into it. So uh, the media team is saying something else. The presidential candidate is saying something else. It was a big deal for, for the presidential council of uh, campaign of APC when it got audience with Olusha Gobas and Chief Olusha Gobas and John. If he was irrelevant, why did he go to seek for his endorsement and support? Why did he move, pull every button to ensure that that happened? And now, down the line, of course, all the presidential candidates came to him and they discussed. And at the end of the day, the man said, at this point in my life, I need to tell this youth uh, some home, some truth. I, I see it. He saw it in his own perspective. And after his own perspective, he's a Nigerian. How can you say he doesn't have an opinion of his own? He said he wants his voice has his opinion. As some people are saying, oh, because he's a father. Even a father makes a decision, a king who is a father makes a decision on who becomes his uh, heir, who will succeed him. Even in companies, in corporate entities, among your children who are maybe members of the management. When you want to retire, you pick somebody to succeed you. 
in family businesses, in, in, in administration, there must be a successor. And so people are annoying. Don't, uh, I mean, this issue of, oh, if the father is not supposed to, who told you he's not supposed to? Even in the family, fathers make decisions on, on those kind of issues. So um, if it's not relevant, why are we still talking about it? So but the endorsement is very relevant, and that is why people are jittering. So about alliances, about political parties, this election is very interesting because um, you cannot outrightly dismiss any of the three frontliners at this stage. You can't. You do that at your own peril. You cannot dismiss the APC candidate. You cannot dismiss the Labour Party candidate. You cannot dismiss the PDP Party candidate. So, people, some schools of thought are already saying that there may be a runoff, that the team may be so tight that there may be runoff, which has hardly happened in Nigeria. We hear it in other countries where election results become so tight and then a runoff is forced. But uh, people are looking at that it may happen for the first time in Nigeria in 2023 election. Because it's so tight. Every of these candidates has supporters across every region. Fierce supporters. Therefore, it may not be too it may it may not be too out of place to say that some parties are already seeking alliances. So as time we go, we'll see more of those things come up. Some candidates will step down. We are talking about the smaller parties, coalition of smaller parties. Even I am foreseeing a situation where even the big parties, the big four or the big three parties, may even forge some kind of alliance. I am. I also look. I'm also trying to say so whether such a thing will happen, because when it comes to runoff, you will see how trading will happen. Negotiations will take place, and that's the beauty of democracy. Negotiations interest, quest for power, and control of resources. All right. Very, very interesting one indeed. Um, let's quickly uh, take your thoughts on the latest as far as the uh, Edo train station attack is concerned, that Tommy Kimi uh, train station. Now, we're hearing one Edo train attack victim has regained uh, their freedom. This is on the bottom of the front page. Uh, of uh, the nation. So I can, I can put it this way, one more uh, 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 kidnapped person has been freed. What, what are your thoughts on this? It's a really worrying situation. The, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, an incident that should not have happened if the federal government learned any lessons from the Abuja, uh, Kaduna train bound uh, uh, train that, that happened some uh, last year. If the right measures were taken, um, it would not have happened. Uh, we are shocked by the Nigerian Railway Corporation that all the uh, you know strategies have been put in place to ensure that it doesn't reoccur. So I don't know if they only went to Abuja Kaduna uh, routes to do that, but they have other routes in other in other places. One of the issues, one of the things we have said is that the I have recommended countless times that we should have CCTV cameras in our train stations, in our train, you know, where people wait to catch the train and even along the tracks. But we are not doing that. Why are we not doing that? Then we have also reiterated that at least there should be presence of in strategic uh, stations across the country. There must be presence of security operatives. If you have security operatives at the airports, why can't you have them at the train stations? The security operatives can be a mufti. Now, I also advocated that these rail tracks run through communities all across the country. The youths of that area should be constituted into local vigilantes across the routes of the, of the track. And these are the people that will do that gather intelligence and give to the Nigerian armed forces. And when you do that, you know that all the locality, you have the local vigilantes guiding them. There will be people that will pass information. There are the people that know the strangers among them. There are the people that will give the intel. But nothing is happening. 
So the Cardinal says uh, the Cardinal Bank uh, uh, train happened. We month we closed the place for some months. We reopened and said uh, those things on have happened. We have issued speeches, templates, and say, oh, the place shocked and all those kind of pleases we hear. It's over. The next thing, business will continue as usual. Then the, until the next one is waiting to happen. It's a, it's a very sad development. We are not, we are always reactive in this country. We don't want to prevent things from happening. All right. The, right, right now, it's not even clear how this victim was rescued um, by security agents, which of the agencies involved, how they went about it. Um, the details are not clear. It happened last night. Hopefully, today, this morning, we'll get some more information uh, so we know whether. Uh, uh, maybe an operation, a rescue operation was conducted because we know they've been combing the bush or the bushes to see if they can find these persons. Are you, are you confident with, with the way it's gone? You know, 32 persons kidnapped, some have been freed so far, um, that we'll have a different tale from the Kaduna victims in terms of the rescue efforts. I know, talking about this is tiring. It's, um, why, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just... Uh, thinking of the horrific situation that those people that were kidnapped are going through for no fault of theirs. Uh, their government has failed them. Uh, they are not supposed to be where they are now. And then, uh, you know, a lot of people were kidnapped. You know, we are just having one or two people, a uh, few people released here and there. Even those who are released, if you interview them, you hear the gory things, you hear the trauma. Some of them are never healed from the trauma till they die. So this, well, these things are preventable. If we have done our work well, we shouldn't even be talking about rescue operation because by now, we would have even prevented it from happening. So why do we allow things that we, we can prevent from happening? That is the reactive measures I'm talking about. So now they are requested for 620 million a, a, a ransom. So our families will desperately start to understand that we're shifting with them. And this is what emboldens these kidnappers because they'll turn it to a business. Oh, all right. So you, you, you think that uh, maybe some of the people who have been released might be down to, uh, to negotiation, a payment of ransom. We hope not uh, because we don't want to see money go into the hands of, uh, of these, um, these criminals. Um, I mean, maybe they're looking for a new Naira. Who knows? But thank you very much, Ambassador Boke. Appreciate your time. We hope that the victims will be released as quickly as possible. And we look forward to having you on the program next time. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, all right. And uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll look at INEC and insecurity with an agency official saying uh, that uh, the security situation may compromise the elections next year. The government has had its say this morning, as you saw in the papers. We have guests joining us for discussions of this. Please stay with us.